Today we're putting on a Humminbird Helix 7 Mega Side Imaging Sonar System onto an Old Town Sportsman PDL120. And we're going to use the Yak Attack Helix Fish Finder mount. This is a flat rectangular mount that is pre drilled for the Helix units. So the first thing we need to do is take off the bracket that is underneath the PDL so we can connect our Helix brackets to that one. Okay, just take out these two Phillips screws that are holding the bracket in and then it'll pop right off. The next step is to connect this PDL bracket to this Humminbird bracket and there's a right way and a wrong way to put these together. So you want these two holes that are more closely spaced facing the same direction as these arms here on the Humminbird bracket. As long as those are facing the same direction then they'll fit together nicely. So what you're going to do is take two three-quarter inch stainless screws and put them into these slots and these two screws are then going to go into these two more closely spaced holes on the bracket. Okay the two screws are in so now put two stainless hex nuts on those screws. Before you tighten these screws down slide this down a little bit Grab your other Humminbird bracket and slide these nubs here into these channels. Pull it up and then slide this Humminbird bracket so that it is just about flush with the PDL bracket but just a hair lower. If it's too high like this, the wire on your transducer will be getting bent against the bottom of your boat. And if it's too far down this way, your bracket will stick down below your keel guard on the boat. So the bracket itself would be exposed to hitting a log or a rock or dragging on the ground. So there is a perfect spot here and that is just a hair below the PDL bracket. So that's where I'm going to tighten those screws down. Okay, you can see the whole bracket is now put together with the Humminbird bracket just a tiny bit below the PDL bracket. Now this last bracket with the arms on it is going to snap down in place. These little tabs here will lock it in place. So push down on that and you'll hear a loud click. And now it's ready to go on the boat. Your transducer has these two little plastic circles that come with. They may still be attached to yours but if they've fallen off there is one little piece here that is longer than the rest of these little pieces. So you need to find that spot where the little nub here is longer and that matches up with this little bar on top of the transducer. So that's the orientation you have to put those circles in in order for it to fit. like that. Go ahead and install your bracket back on the boat with these arms up on the top side. Now you can see why it's important to have the bracket just a tiny bit lower. If it was any higher these arms here would be basically right up against the boat and the wire on top of the transducer would be back here and being pinched as well. And if this was any lower this way the keel guard here would not be protecting the bracket. So you can't have this sitting down any lower than the keel guard. Go ahead and put your transducer on. You may have to hold these little plastic circles in place so that they don't fall off. And you can attach it all with this bolt. Okay, your transducer is now on. You can see that the wire here is bent a little bit, but it's not really being pinched. If we would have had the bracket up farther, it would be pinching that wire pretty bad. So now the transducer cable can just run right up through this scupper hole here and up to the top side. Okay, once your transducer cable is all pulled through, you have a couple of different options. You can do a through-haul wiring kit like this one from Wilderness Systems. 
which involves drilling some holes into your kayak and running your cable through over here or over here. That basically gets it into your hatch here and it runs underneath and over to here and it would pop out next to your gear track over here or somewhere along here. The cable can go up and connect to your screen. What I decided to do, at least for now, instead of drilling into my new boat, I cut a notch into the hatch cover. And this just sits like normal with the wire going right through the hatch cover. And I'm not real worried about this being an entry point for water because this rim here is still intact. There's nothing cut out of it. And even when this hatch cover is down, the rim is basically at the top of the hatch cover. So there isn't really a, a big hole or anything for water to get through. If I decide I don't like that design, I can always just get a new hatch cover and go with the wiring kit instead and, and drill some holes. Okay, now we need to get our power source connected. This is your battery cable. What I've done here is cut the insulation that was up here so that I could spread these wires apart because for my battery, these terminals are fairly far apart and I need to spread the wires out to reach the terminals. Then I just wrapped the area where I cut the insulation with some electrical tape and I crimped on some connectors here to fit onto these terminals. So there's a red wire that goes on the red side, black wire on the black side, and the connectors look just like this. You just stick the bare wire here into this connector, crimp it down, and then you can slide it right on the terminal. I also made a little nest of foam here in a lunch box so I can put my battery in there and it just keeps it from sliding around a lot when it's in the boat. Okay, now we need to get the screen set up. So we're using the Yak Attack Helix Fish Finder mount. You can see that the four corner holes in the mounting plate match up with the four holes on the bracket. So we're going to be putting it together like this with these four screws going through the top and these nuts on the back side. Okay, I've got three of the screws in. The best way I found to do this is to put the nut in this channel first. Just put it into place, then flip it over and hold that nut with your finger. Then put the screw in, get a few turns on it, and then use this Allen key that they provide and tighten that up. Once it gets pretty snug, you can let go because the nut is sitting in this channel that is made to seat this hex nut. So you don't need to get a wrench or a socket or anything on that nut to tighten it down because the plastic here is actually doing that for you. So at this point, you can just tighten it back down with the Allen key until it's tight. Okay. The last step is to put the bracket on the screen. So these arms are just going to fall into place right there. And then you take these two screws here and just tighten them in. To get the screen on the boat, we just need to slide on our gear track mount, tighten it down. and then attach our stand. I've got my battery case in the hatch now with the power cable coming out. A little bit of extra cable is sitting inside the case. So I've got enough wire here to reach to my sonar. And I'm gonna do the same thing with my transducer wire. You see there's a lot of extra cable in there. So I'm just gonna pull enough out that I can reach to the sonar system. And then the rest of it, I'm going to tidy that up by just looping it up and tying it into something inside the hatch. Your power cable goes on the left side. The transducer cable goes on the right side. And now we can turn it on. There we go. We're all set. I was able to clean up that transducer cable by just looping it up and using a couple of zip ties to tie it up and secure it to that scupper hole that I ran the cable through from the bottom. 
If you have any questions about this setup, feel free to leave those below. Otherwise, I'll see you on the water.